Hey, welcome back, Zero K fans, to Nanolades at Dawn. I remain your host, Chad Fury 333, with the June 2016 1v1 tournament and game one of the, or game two of the other winner semifinals, Orphilius versus Snuggle Base, which is on Trojan Hills. Apparently, Orphilius won game one, 1 0. Command console so I'll have to actually adjust for that. It is on this one. Oh, it's just here. Oh, no, it's not there. Hang on, sorry, one sec. Go back to there. But yeah, so Aknim lost to Google Frog. So going to losers, and Orphilius currently winning. They're doing really well, for, especially given that they were very concerned. I mean, they were going on about how they were figuring they were going to lose, and they weren't. there's no point, they wanted to resign. And at this point, they're, they're on track. I mean, they're possibly going to win this. Anyhow, Orphelius with one win. Snuggle Base with no wins. Snuggle Base going for shields. Orphelius going for double gunship. Double overlapped gunship. Not sure if they work any better one way or the other, but definitely going for the gunships. And very early Blastwing. I think we are finally going to see the Wasp on stream. The first time we see the new gunship constructor on stream. Snuggle Base going for early constructor, early dirtbag. No real early raiding. While Orphelius going for... All of the early raiding, going for early Banshee, going for early Blastwing, just for extra scouting more so than anything. I mean, early Blastwing can do some damage. It's just usually it just maybe kills a Metal Extractor, maybe a Wind Generator. Mostly just sees what your opponent's up to for relatively low cost. I think the cost is 80? 55. Wow, that's, that is cheap. Okay, so Orphelia's in a pretty good spot right now. I mean, they know exactly what Snuggle Base is up to. They should be able to get rid of, wow, three Wind Gens right off the bat. That is handy. Although Snuggle Base right now, they have they have a decent amount of energy here. I mean, altogether, that's 10 energy. So Snuggle Base is not too bad. But still, losing another 6 is not bad. And got rid of Metal Extractor just to boot. Why not? Although, even then, that's... There's not much for Orphelius. They should probably be getting some Constructors soon. Because while Orphelius did do a pretty nice raid there, and they do have more Banshees coming in, which means more good raids likely on the way. And another Blastwing too, which is always good at this stage in the game, I should say. Not always, always good, obviously. It can be just shot out of the sky. And actually, that's what the Defender's going to do. The Banshees, oh, they need to move forward. Oh no, those Banshees did not move forward in time. And thanks to that, the Blastwing died. If the Banshees had moved forward, that Defender would have gone down or would have shot at the Banshees, allowing the Blastwing to get in, possibly killing another extra couple Wind Generators, that was a mistake of just clicking. Like, Orphelius did not move the Banshees far enough in. I don't know if Orphelius was trying to regroup them beforehand to make sure they didn't spread out or what, but yeah, that was not what Orphelius wanted to do, I'm sure. They probably wanted to have the Banshees move up, distract whatever defenses might be there, and then the Blastwing comes in. Although they might have actually tried to hit the Blastwing, and there it is. There is the Wasp. It looks like something out of Crash Bandicoot, actually. But, seriously, it's like... Does it not remind you guys of Neocortex, somehow, from Crash Bandicoot? For anyone who's old enough to actually have played that game, that's what these little spikes remind me of. But yeah, this is... That's the Wasp. That is it. It is the new Gunship Constructor. It's 7.5 metal per second, 600 health, costs 300, and moves at like 90 elmo per second or something. No, wait. 93 elmo per second. That is our new constructor, and also the reason why we can say now every single factory has a unique constructor, because Gunship now has its own wasp. At this point, though, Orphelius definitely switching over to the economy play from the military play. They are no, no longer as focused on their military as they have been. They're currently much more focused on their economy, which kind of makes sense. I mean, it's, it's something you want to do, like you harass in order to be able to cover expansion. And Orphelius with a slight economic advantage. Production, however, is not keeping up. They do need to build that up as well. Like, get another wasp, get another, or maybe not necessarily a wasp. Those are expensive. That's kind of the point, like, is making it harder for Gunship to expand and very quickly take over the whole map. Just by making the constructor about... 30% more expensive? Yeah, something like that. That's, the idea is basically to make that no longer as trivial. And Orphelius with a flamethrower commander. Not something you see a whole lot. 
But one of the many reasons I love the Dynamic Commander Morph System, it's so cool because you get to see everything used. Especially this tournament, I've actually seen, like, Flamethrower we've seen a few times in exhibition matches, but I've never seen Plasma Artillery until the game that Orphelius played against Aquinum. But yeah, that is... That's the thing. You can just do whatever you want. You don't have to pre-make it. It's so cool. And I mean, I imagine as people get into the game, filter in the game, and we're not at all introduced to the old system of Commander Morse, where you had to pre-build everything, you had to set it all up, and then you could do it. You had the levels all, all set up for you. Now, it's not a thing. So, anyone coming in is going to think, oh, what are you talking about? Commander Morse are always dynamic, right? It's like, no, they weren't. They are now really great. Anyway, a snuggle base trying to figure out what's going on. Orphelius, good defense on there. Nice placement of that Stardust. Making sure that they can't easily be attacked. However, Snuggle Base not taking that lying down, going around the side to make sure that there is at least something taken. And Orphilius on the ball a little bit, getting a Lotus up so that the, the bandits cannot get in trivially. However, the bandits, if they go in from here and then go up the hill, then there's no opposition whatsoever. And that's probably what they're going to do. Especially once they see the Lotus. No, Snuggle Base going to just go for the Lotus, which is suicide being that Banshees are here. The Lotus will... Not go down? Holy crap, that's 80 health left. I was expecting it to go down. It did not. The bandits did. And Vandal... How many Vandals are there? Five Vandals, one of which is not in production. Just five Vandals, one of which was damaged. And Snuggle Base continuing to build... Are they spelling something out? I feel like they're spelling something out with those wind generators, but I'm not sure what it is. Anyway... Snuggle base, definitely with the economic advantage. Orphilius getting another wasp up and possibly getting more. I mean, the thing is, right now, Orphilius needs to harass really hard. And they have the Banshees and they have the Bandits. Like, Orphilius does have, because they did get Shieldbot Factory, I should point out. They got a proxy Shieldbot Factory. Did not point that out, but they do have that. Bandits and Banshees coming out here, so this is definitely good forces for harassment. The problem being, the Stardusts beat both of them. Rapiers would probably not be a bad idea. Quite honestly, Rapiers would basically get through the Stardust no problem. And at this point, there are Stardusts everywhere. There's just one over here and over here, like, and one for Orphelius, but mostly for Snuggle Base. Snuggle Base, they're pretty well defended. I don't see Orphelius doing a huge amount of damage, but I do see that Orphelius is not building up when they need to. The Nuts Wasp is idle, and their Shield Bot Factory is doing what they can, but the Gunship Factory is not. And it could be, and of course, excess. Excess is never good. We do have one caretaker which is helping, I think. It's helping, it's not helping at all. This caretaker is just, just sitting idle. What the heck? Those are supposed to help out automatically. I don't know what's going on. But anyway, Orphilius right now, I think, might be paying for that. Both the idle caretaker, the idle gunship plant, the idle wasp, like all this stuff's idle and it's not helping. Rager Switch is happening though. Which is good, but yeah, this... I don't even... The caretakers should be automatically going. I thought that was a thing that was done. Yeah, even Failtoss is... Okay, so Failtoss, who is currently the top active player in the game, is confused. So, yeah. If the top active player in the game is confused, you know something's weird. But at any rate... Orphelius might want to check that setting... Regardless, though, Snuggle Base with a massive army of bandits, 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 massive army of bandits. I cannot pronounce properly the English accent. I am getting messed up. Anyway, massive army of bandits coming in here, and that's going to be a problem. No, no Stardust that are relevant. They're over here, and the Lotus went down. No problem. And the main base is basically dead. This Roach is the only hero that Orphelius might have. Orphelius has got that and not much else. Snugglebase did pick this map, by the way. That's the thing to bear in mind. Snugglebase actually did pick this map because I guess they figured they'd win on it, and at this point I can see why. Strong star from Orphelius, but unfortunately all that excess basically cost them the game because their army is tiny compared to what Snugglebase had. And Orphelius, I mean, yeah, they might be going for build up a large amount of money so they can respond quickly, but they, they would need four caretakers, two for each factory, in order for that to be an effective strategy, and they've got one in total. Not 
two for each factory, not four. They don't have enough to make that work. And I think this is not quite going to be the end, but it's probably close. Uh, the gunship factory is going to go down very shortly. Actually, the factory is not going to go down. The, only one band is not enough. But yeah, that's what I'm... I don't know. Orphilius, I think it's going to hold on a little bit longer. I don't think they're completely done. I don't think they want to throw in the towel. Not yet. They have more things planned. They have more ideas in mind, I think. But it's very close. It seems like it's going to be just another few shots, another few things. Hoping for the best. And then I think one more battle will be it. These rogues are trying to do what they can. But now the entire south side is getting ripped to shreds. A couple of Banshees are going to try to defend, but against... How many Vandals? Ten Vandals? No, not going to happen. Yeah, Shaman. Pity you did not do Roach Drop. No wonder you're saying that, Shaman. Shaman's actually been working on a widget to show people where the Roach would drop. If you're having a Roach in a Valkyrie, I would actually draw a curve how the Roach is going to fly out of the Valkyrie if you were to launch it at that moment. So, yeah, Shaman would be the person to say... I'm a bit ashamed there is no Roach Drop. Or, not ashamed. Pity. That was a pity that Orphelius did not do the Roach Drop, but Orphelius did not do the Roach Drop. And we are on to Game 3. Man, I'm glad I switched over to this. Because, first off, Trojan Hills. Love that map. And secondly, that was a cool game. And thirdly, we're on to Game 3. So this is actually the bottleneck right now. Yeah. Okay, so Game 3. Orphelius gets the choice of map again. Not sure what they're going to go for because they've been doing they've been doing a lot of work on a lot of different maps. I think they're probably going to go for a smaller map though. I'm guessing it's going to be something on the well, 8 by 8 scale obviously. Maybe something that was in the Swiss rounds that they won on. I mean they won on most of their maps so I don't know. But yeah I feel like that's going to be something like that. Yeah Snuggle Base didn't even have a huge amount of territory. It's just... That backside attack could not be stopped. There was nothing in the back. Orphelius did not build any defenses. And that probably would have saved their life if they had. But they hadn't. So that's how it goes. Yeah, so what what was the excess? Orphelius at 4k excess. Ouch. Especially since Orphelius had produced the same amount of metal as Snuggle Base, but used... 4,000 less. That's the that's the excess right there. They were actually on par, metal economy-wise, the entire game. It was just production was the problem. And energy income was also on... Wow! Holy crap. I mean, there's a slight variation, but for about three or four minutes, they were following each other. Oh, this is wind. That's why. Okay. They had the exact same amount of wind generators. And that's all it was. They just had the exact same amount of wind generators going forward. And so the variations ended up just working out identically. That's... I have never seen that happen before. Where it's just that specific amount of wind generators, it just works out. I mean, clearly here there's a couple solars that are differentiating Snuggle Base, but overall, both very reliant on wind, and both reliant almost identically on wind, which is amusing. And then unit value is actually even. Until Orphelia started losing a lot of units, they were dead even. Or very close to dead even. It's just after... After, I guess, the air units got knocked out and after the bandits got torn to shreds over here in the center and over in the back behind enemy lines, at that point, Orphelius kind of lost what momentum they had. Pretty neat, though. Anyhow, moving on, what map are we going to be on next? Looks like we're still waiting for Orphelius to decide. Oh, it is going to be Icy Shell. That makes sense. That's a small map. That is a map that I would definitely see Orphelia's going for if they want a smaller, more opening friendly, more momentum friendly map. I don't want to say cheese friendly. I don't think cheese is the right word. It's momentum. It's that early start, having a strong start, and then working from that. That seems to be Orphelia's strength, and they want to play to that. Makes sense. But. I don't know. I'm curious what's going to happen with that. Because on the one hand, yeah, they're going to play to that strength. On the other hand, that's kind of a one-shot thing. I 
Oh, what's this? Are we... My name is being used for terrible puns. I'm so proud. Anyhow, sorry, that's in the chat. I'm probably distracting. Anyway. I would say it, but it's like, I just can't. Cold Snap, though. Orphelia is going for Cold Snap? Really? I'm not sure I like that idea. At all. Because Cold Snap tends to take a while, and we're probably going to hit the time limit. And I don't know why Orphelius is doing that. Maybe they want to go gunships again and just take advantage of the sheer size of the map, but... That didn't work out well last time. We saw that Orphelius does not quite have it as down when it comes to the later game stuff. So, it's not great. Gotta be honest, this is not what I'd expect Orphelius to do. They might pull it out, though. They might be able to make it work. That sounded terrible. But I stand by it. I think they will be able to make this thing work. They will pull it out. And that will be the thing they want to do. They've got to go for the safer option, I guess, is what they're thinking of. They don't want to go for the momentum. They want to go for something where they can build up and just expand around and win that way. The brute force option, to get a bunch of money, push forward, and don't worry about cheese. Worry about just fighting everything. And Snugglebase going for spiders while Orphelius goes for light vehicles. And Orphelius, I kind of agree with Snugglebase. Okay, the flea is going to do a fair amount of good. It's really going to come down to how much that center pass becomes relevant. And Orphelius starting in the north with light vehicles is awkward. I would expect the south because you have this big lake, the big frozen lake that's essentially just there. You can just drive across it, no problem. But they're closer to the pass, and this other hilly, well, factory-ish area. I feel like Orphelius is playing to their weakness, at least by factory. However, this may also work out if Orphelius makes sure to avoid the center. As long as they go along the north or the south and avoid the center entirely, and I guess take advantage of the speed then it should work out okay, but at this point, Snuggle Base has so many ambush opportunities just from the hills. Because that's what spiders do. That's what the spider does. Stays in the hills and then ambushes you. Right as you don't expect it. I don't really see Snuggle Base building up any Venoms, though. Oh, yeah, there I go. Right as I say that. I don't see them building Venoms, but they are planning to, right as they type, tap the buttons to do so. Now, it looks like we are seeing a slasher push out of Orphilius, so this is actually pretty smart. When you're fighting against the Spiderbot factory, you don't want to get close because the Venoms have the EMP, and splash EMP, so it makes a lot of sense to do that. And actually, Snugglebase is responding by switching over to building Hermits instead of Venoms because that wouldn't work. Venoms would basically be torn to shreds by the slashers. Hermits, on the other hand, can tank them out. So, I think what will happen is Orphilius will be building slashes for a while, try to push out, and then once the Hermits come up, I'm guessing Orphilius will probably build some Scorchers to deal with the Hermits, at which point Snugglebus will build some Venoms, and we'll get a bit more of a typical Venom Hermit build. But right now, both players are trying to build the thing that they think is most effective against their enemy, given what they know. Which, in Orphilius' case, is considerably less than Snugglebus. Snugglebus knows a lot more what's going on. Playing Spiders helps a lot with that, too, because as we can see, Snugglebus... They got vision of the slasher line. Like, they know what's happening. Orphelius, on the other hand, has got nothing. Their dart isn't even... Their dart's just staking out of position. They just want to know when Snugglebase is going north, assuming that Snugglebase is going through the main pass and not going over the mountain itself. If they're going over the mountains, then that dart's kind of useless. Still, it's not a bad idea to stake out expansion positions like this. Good way to know what's going on. And at this point, it looks like Snugglebase has lost their fleas. So Orphelia is at least able to get rid of that vision, not that it really matters, since Snugglebase can probably infer what's gone on since then. But it does mean that Orphelias can change their composition if they'd like, and don't have to worry as much about being spotted out. As much. There's... No, none of the north! Yeah, Orphelias is actually completely free of fleas. They have had their flea bath, and the proper, sh and the proper shampoo, and the very tough brush combed all the fleas out. So at least... They don't have to worry about that so much. 
but Snuggle Base may put some more fleas into Orpheus' hair. Which is a cruel thing to do, but that's just the kind of game we play here. We play rough. And in a way that causes barbers no end of distress. I apologize to all the barbers in the world. But, yeah, we're just screwing with you. That's the entire point of this game. Zero K is to make barbers' lives miserable. But, at this point, that's not happening. Because there are no more fleas, entirely hermits. That's all we have. And at this point, Orphelius is not building anything? What? Really? I have a bunch of darts for scouting. And are they going to go to excess mode again? Not excess mode. Don't go into excess mode. Okay, wind generators are super useful here. 1 to 2.5. That is extremely valuable, but I think Orphelius has got to be careful. For one thing, yeah, idle. There you go. <laughs> it's like, come on, build stuff. Build ravagers. Really good idea, actually. Against hermits, that's, that's wise. They're fast enough. Scorchers are also a good idea. Both of them I agree with. Although, given the Raptors being on the hills, I'd almost say that Wolverines wouldn't be a bad idea either, just to basically compensate for the fact that you can't be hit. Or switch to gunships. Switch to gunships, get some Banshees out. The Hermits can't deal with that, and the Banshees can deal with the fact that the Hermits are on the hills. Or Phileas' commander, however, getting hit hard, needs to move out of the way. Otherwise, that will not last long. And right now, territory-wise, yeah, they're being pushed back. The Hermits are going away. Don't need to worry about that too much. Territory-wise, it looks like Snuggle Base pretty well ahead here. I mean, they have the southwest. They've got the hills being built up, too, so they're going to be able to go around the back and avoid that dart entirely. Orphelius, on the other hand, they're expanding relatively consistently. So, overall, Orphelius is working out okay, but I feel like Orphelius doesn't have the same density. In terms of defenses, well, is that Stardust right there that's stopping everything through the center pass? That's actually probably a bad thing. I mentioned it early on in the game. Snuggle Base wants Orphelius to go in the center pass. So, while building a Stardust there is definitely an effective deterrent against the center pass, it'll stop Orphelius from attacking directly. At the same time, Snuggle Base is strongest there. So, if Orphelius decides, oh, I'm not going to attack the center pass, that's impossible. There's a Stardust there. I'm going to do that. This is stupid. Well, then they won't do that. They'll go to the south. Or they'll go north. Actually, north would be a bad idea. But they'll go south. And if they go south, well, that doesn't matter then. Because if they go south, that is the best spot for Orphelius to fight from. Going to the north is not great, but going to the south, that's perfect. And Snuggle Base is going to have a harder time dealing with that. And at this point as well, these hermits are... Actually, I can't really tell. This army is more expensive. The army that Orphelius currently has alive is more expensive than Snuggle Base's, but I feel like it's been more effective. Not sure if it's more cost-effective, though. It's really hard to tell. Still, Snuggle Base losing a lot of Hermits. Switching over to Crab, though, that 40 metal basically coming in handy. And Orphilius with the Gunship Switch. No follow-up to the Gunship Switch. Okay, there we go. Finally follow-up to the Gunship Switch. They probably should still build some vehicles because they have the money. They might as well. They've got the money. Might as well spend it. But apparently Snuggle Base is not too worried about that. Figures accessing is okay, which it's not. That lost in the last game. Pretty thoroughly. And also, if this falls at all, there's not much left to deal with it, as I was pointing out before with the territory. At the same time, though, Orphelius does seem to have almost an independent south side. Snuggleway's kind of taking the north and does have defenses over to the north side. Okay, they have a Stardust over to the south as well, so it's a it's a bit even. Snuggleway's definitely trying to make sure that Orphelius cannot easily get in. But Orphelius is not really going to worry about the Stardust because Rapiers don't care. They just attack. And Scorchers coming in as well. They do care. The Scorchers care quite a lot, actually. So I'd expect that's not going to be as trivial as, say, Banshees would be. Sorry, not Banshees. As Rapiers. It's not going to be as trivial for the Scorchers as it will be for the Rapiers. But the Rapiers will probably rush in, get rid of the Stardust. And the Scorchers will then rush in and get rid of the Hermits. And possibly the Crab. Because the Crab is also a pain in the butt that needs to be dealt with. Unless Orphelius wants to lose everything. Of course, that's... Not the main concern. The main concern is the Venom Redback little sneaky attack here from the north side. Very clever. Orphelius will be able to deal with that no problem. Looks like very little damage is actually dealt. Yeah, there we go. All those Venoms. Venom Redback going down. The main threat is the center. And also, Hermit's going over the hills by the lake, which Orphelius has not taken any of, despite the fact that being blight vehicles, 
Morphilius has the advantage on that terrain. Nope, not happening. That's not really what Orphilius cares about right now. Orphilius seems to care mostly about keeping their eastern side of the map safe. Not as much about taking the south, taking the lake. They started north, which does not help. If they could take that lake, it would do a lot of good, but they haven't. Now, where's the tarantula? No, oh, no, tridents. That's our solution. That's what Snuggle Base is going for. Getting some tridents out, using that to deal with the rapiers, instead of using tarantulas, which I gotta agree with. I mean, these are cheaper. They're 270 each, rather than 400. And also, don't die to rapiers quite so easily. I don't think. I'm not sure actually how easily tarantulas die to rapiers. But against this many rapiers, I would also go with tridents. And Snuggle Base going for some rapiers of their own now. We are going to see probably rapier trident wars, and it will likely come down to the winner of that, though I feel like Snuggle Base, having taken the center pretty convincingly, is just going to be able to slowly roll over. Just very slowly, gradually roll over Orphelius at this point, unless Orphelius goes to the south. If Orphelius goes to the south, it might help. I keep saying that, because there's a lot of open metal extractor. There's a lot of open space. If life vehicles work well in open space. That would be a thing to do. That Blastwing dodged? Aw, oh, man, that Blastwing dodged and it didn't hit the Trident afterwards to kill it. Oh, is it going to have to, is it going to, have to start us? Because that seems like a mistake. Although it looks like it doesn't matter. The the Rays are not doing much good either. Really? How many? Okay, 12 Rapiers. That, that kind of explains it. And the Stardust getting hit. Not taking a huge amount of damage, but still getting hit. And Leveler versus Stardust. The Leveler loses. Over to the north, we have the crab managing to push in on the hill, because that's what spiders do. Like, this is why I'm surprised Orphelius is not trying to bring the fight south, where they win, and instead keeping the fight north, where the crabs can just take positions on the hill that the vehicles cannot do anything about, or just allowing everything to happen on the hill. Basically, Snuggle Base is in heaven right now. This is exactly where they want to be, and Orphelius is not really taking the position that they work best in. Leveler did manage to move in, though. Doing a bit of damage. It's going to soon die to Ravagers. I mean, not Ravagers, Hermits. Same weapon type, but yeah. They're just going to soon die. It, there it goes. Died to Hermits. And Rapiers, once again, coming in to try to get rid of that crab. But it's tough, because that crab has got effectively 12,000 health right now. Actually, effectively... What is it? Yeah, effectively 4,500 health. So... Even a full volley is not dealing a huge amount of damage. Hello! Nice switch to Crashers there. Possibly suicidal, especially with the crab. But now the crab's moving. The rapier, is it going to be able to hit the crab in time? I think it doesn't matter. Because if the crab gets stationary, the rapier will be able to kill it. And where are the rapiers going? Oh! Oh, I see. They're trying to hit the south crab. I feel like that's getting a bit distracted at this point. Like, I don't know if that's the best idea just because that North Crab was basically dead. Now it's probably too late. It's inside of Snuggle Base's territory. The reclaim would go to Snuggle Base. But yeah, that one was dead. Although this one... Oh, never mind. It's also dead. So, I guess it works out. That's another dead crab. So Orphilius not taking it lying down. Definitely trying to fight back. Unfortunately, not super able to get in har far. And... Crow already up for Snuggle Base. So at this point, Orphilius is taking out stuff here and there, but not able to really punch into Snuggle Base's base. And that's been the big thing. Snuggle Base has been able to just slowly crawl forward, while Orphilius has slowly ceded territory. They're trying to hold fast, but the problem is they don't have the economic advantage, so they're still going to gradually get torn to shreds. And where's that Crow now? Okay, there's the crow, and tarantula are also up, which makes it even harder. Like, but this looks like a, what's meant to be the final attack. Snuggle base pushing in over the mountains with the hermits, as well the crow coming in just to deal help deal the final blow. And it is going to be basically dead. I don't really see any way out of this for, for Orphelius. Like, the crow isn't even the real threat. The crow is more or less a distraction to make it harder to get rid of all of those hermits. 
They're trying to be able to push the crow away more or less, but the problem is the hermits. The problem is the sheer number of hermits being able to deal basically with everything here. The rapiers being the only exception. The rapiers basically being the only saving grace, but the tarantula on top of that, able to get rid of the rapiers, and snuggle base taking the game as Orphelius realizes there's not much they can do at this point. Snuggle base taking it quite convincingly. Well done, Snuggle Base. So Snuggle Base moves on as well. Orphelius versus Aquinum is the loser's match. Whereas Winner's Finals, which we're going to be watching ne next, is Snuggle Base versus Google Frog. That will be up in a bit. I don't know when that's going to come up. I'm guessing very shortly. But yeah, so we're going to have that. I just... People were pointing out that Orphelius wasn't raiding, and no, they weren't. That's the big problem. Like, they weren't raiding, they weren't using the speed of the light vehicles, they weren't using the flat terrain advantage of the light vehicles. I feel like they were trying to play a bot match with light vehicles, and that doesn't work. And on this map, spiders had the advantage just because of the hills. The only place they don't have advantage is the south side, which is the side that Orphelius did not really deal with. Still, I mean, pretty well played. I know Orphelius keeps saying that they're bad. That wasn't terribly played. It was just one or two mistakes. The excess is the biggest thing. I think if Orphelius stopped excessing, because that was, yeah, again, four, four to 500 excess. If Orphelius just remembered to have one extra caretaker, he's got in the habit of having one extra caretaker and having repeat build. Just, if they don't excess, that would help a lot. Because once again, Metal produced was about even. Almost the entire game, metal produced was even. Metal used was way down for Orphelius. Once again, that's the thing. The vast majority of the, of the discrepancy in metal used is the 4,500 metal excess. If you count for that, like 25k, that's 29k. Well, right here. And that's much closer. And that's only at the end. Most of the game, it was about the same. Whereas used, Snuggle Base had the advantage the whole time. And not to mention with the spider units. I mean, obviously that... Does not help. That's an advantage in and of itself. So, yeah. It's really coming down to excess a lot of the time. Anyway, that is that. So we're going to be moving on to... The next match, which is going to be... Google Frog and Snuggle Base. I'm not sure why the bracket has not been updated. Is the bracket... I think I didn't refresh it enough. There we go. Yeah, there. Perfect. Okay. So, yeah. Snuggle Base beats Orphelius. Google Frog beats Aquinum. Aquinum and Orphelius then loses round one. Winner's finals is Google Frog versus Snuggle Base. So, there we go. Not sure when it's going to start. But, yeah. That's... Yeah, slow. I'm just surprised that Orphelius didn't go for their original choice of Icy Shell. I think they would have done well in Icy Shell. That's that's kind of the thing. Icy Shell is a really good map for that kind of play. For that smaller play, that brute force, come out of the gate, do a lot of damage, that kind of play. I'm not sure what Cold Snap was meant to prove. I don't know why Orphelius went for that. I'm curious. They might have thought... Like I said before the game started, they might have thought that I can just rush in, deal a lot of damage, then get my economy going, have a strong economy, and then use that economy to leverage a bunch of other advantages and make that work. I don't really see how that worked. That that worked? I don't think that worked. I feel like that was, if that was the idea, it got bogged down in the fact that it was hills. And light vehicles on hills don't work very well. Compared to spiders, at least. Anyway, I guess we'll go do a very brief intermission while we're waiting for the setup for the finals, the winner's finals. And I'll be back shortly after that. So when the winner's finals comes up, the intermission will be over.